Hello and welcome to The Big Picture on RCTV. On The Big Picture we talk sports because, well, we like to talk about sports. My name is Kevin Vent and I'm the host of The Big Picture. I'm here tonight joined by my guest, it's my brother, Eric Vent. Hello, how are you? <laughs> how are you doing tonight, Eric? Hey, good to see you. Well, one of the things that was the generation of this show, or the germination of this show, was that uh, when we watch sports, as men do or people do, I guess, you know, we, we, when we watch sports on TV or something like that, we talk sports. And we start just kind of throwing out all sorts of random things about, you know, who's your favorite uh, third baseman of all time, or who's your second favorite Red Sox relief pitcher of the 1970s. Or, Ooh. Oh yeah, that's a Bill tough Campbell? one. <laughs> Bill Campbell? Number one. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> anyway, so we talk about stuff like that. And that was kind of what I wanted to do with the big picture when we started the show. So it, was, it seemed natural to me uh, to have my brothers on, because this is who I do this with. So, <laughs> so I've had uh, my brother Jonathan on, my brother Joel on, and now we have my brother Eric on. And so, so we're going to talk a little bit of, of sports, and hopefully you find it entertaining because that's what sports is supposed to be. Sports is supposed to be entertaining. And one of the things that we want to do uh, is that makes sports entertaining is talking about our favorites and our least favorites mm -hmm. of things. And so kind of to do that generically, I was just kind of wondering, Eric, you know, you have a, a broad knowledge of lots of different <laughs> sports and, and all sorts of other kinds of things. Right now, at this moment in time, who are your favorite athletes? My favorite athletes. Well, and I, why? This may be a slightly controversial answer, Ooh, you know, based oh. on some recent events in Patriot Nation. Oh my goodness. But I got to still go with Wes Welker right now. Wow. I mean, I'm going to miss him a lot, but you know, he's a guy who played every day, every game as he possibly could, got hurt and somehow he just worked his tail off to get back on and yeah. that's yeah. what I like about him, you know, and I I'm going to miss him. You know, yeah. seeing him out there on the field, I'm going to miss his, the results, obviously. And, sure. and then when you look at the numbers he put up in the six years yeah. in New England, he was just off the number, charts. Number one receiver in the league in terms of receptions every year mm -hmm. he was in New England. Number one in terms of yards, three or four or five of those seasons. I mean, just amazing numbers in that time period for a little scrawny little guy, really. You know, just an amazing guy. Yeah, and yeah, I just... And the, and the other thing with, with so so I want him to do well in Denver. Sure. I hope he has a great season, great rest of his career in Denver, and yep. uh, I hope he loses they don't the make it to the Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Hope he loses in the playoffs. I hope he has, has a great playoff as a player and not so much as a team. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, I think the other thing with Welker is you mentioned his durability. I mean, he missed in his entire Patriots career. He missed one game. And, and that was the only half of the game, really, when he tore the ACL. Right. You know, on right. making that cut in against, was it against uh, uh, Texas? It was against Texas, or no, Houston, Houston, right. Texas. Right. Um, he made that one cut, and he missed the rest of that game. Didn't miss any playing time the entire rest of he, his career. He astounded everyone by playing game one of the next season. Yeah. It was just, what? You know, most people have an injury. It, Sure. At least half the next season, the right. Sure, you know, sure. even then they come back as like, oh, you sure okay? They're very tentative. Well, he was out there getting hit, and you know, partly yeah. like, I mean, you look at him. You ever you really look at Wes Welker? Like, look at his eyes. There's something wrong about him. I, mean, <laughs> I, I think. But I love it. You know? right. <laughs> so he's got to screw loose, but that's okay. You we know? like that. Yeah. You know, that's right. Excellent. Um, right. Any other favorites that you'd point out? I have a couple on my oh, list. Oh well, I mean. I mean, it's all right. if it's okay to be a little on the nose, I mean, Tom Brady, it's, okay. it's hard to dispute Tom Brady, sure. it's hard to dispute David Ortiz, it's hard to dispute those guys, but another guy that really excites me right now is Avery Bradley. Ah, okay. Um, uh, playing with the Celtics, again, I love watching him play, I love the, uh, the energy he brings to the court, you know, uh -huh. it's different than what Rondo brings, yeah. but in some ways a more complete package, especially with the defense. Sure. You know, I love seeing a guard jump up and block shots, you yeah. know, it's just... You know, something that gets me excited and, you know, he can shoot a little, he can, can control the flow of the game, play some defense, and, mm -hmm. you know, I'm really excited to see him develop. And I'm really looking forward to see Avery Bradley and Rondo play more than two or three games a season together. <laughs> uh, I think that right. would be a lot of fun. Um, I agree with you about the defense. I think Rondo is a better defensive player than he showed this particular season. Mm -hmm. I think probably because of them asking him to carry a little more of the offensive load. Um, you know, but really Rondo's defense has always been about steals. He steals the ball, mm -hmm. which is a very important thing to do. But it seems as though Avery Bradley is more of a well-rounded defensive player. Well, he's player. more of a one-on-one. -on -one. You know, he's mm -hmm. um, a spot-up defender against someone else, can help a little bit. But you're right, you know, Rondo is a lot about the steals, which 
the thing, and if you look at the years that the Celtics have been really good these last five years, sure. have been when they've been really good in transition. And where yeah. does transition come a lot of times from those steals? From a big steal or a big block or, or something mm -hmm. like that. That's excellent. Right. Well, just a couple to throw off in the top of my list. Mm -hmm. I have to go traditional, uh, at least for the last bunch of years, on the top of my current favorite athletes. I have a hard time passing by David Ortiz. I, I, I love the, uh, the, the, the clutch nature of his career. I love the fact that when he's down and out, he comes back and has a monster season last year until he got hurt. Um, and, you know, we used to, every time David Ortiz, every time David Ortiz had a home run, we would either call each other or text each other. Ortiz! Just say, Ortiz! <laughs> and that was it. We would hang up. And that, that would be it. But it was, right. it, you know, that, it was a lot of fun, mm -hmm. especially in, in those championship years, you know. When, if the game was close and David Ortiz was coming up, you always knew you had a chance, and I, and I love that. Now, does it bother you that he's just the DH? You know, does that enter into that, your that, thinking at all? That doesn't bother me. I honestly think he's an underrated first baseman. Mm -hmm. I think when he has been asked to play first base in the World Series, when he has been asked to play first base in interleague play, he's done okay. I agree. He's, he, right. he hasn't been a detriment. I mean, he's no, mm -hmm. you know, he's not Adrian Gonzalez as a defensive first baseman. Well, who's the pitcher he picked off the third base? Oh, yeah, yeah, that was in the World Series. Yeah, in right, the right, 04 right. World Series. Yeah. Was it Chris Carpenter? <laughs> I think he picked Chris Carpenter off third base. You know, he never, <laughs> never saw that coming, and right. neither did the pitcher either. Right, right. Um, so, you know, I think he's underrated as a defensive player. I think he could play first base if asked. I wonder if his offense might suffer a little bit from having to play the field. I think that's only natural. He'd be a little more tired. But mm -hmm. but, uh, but I, he's my favorite. My second favorite, uh, if we really uh, look at it, everyone kind of who knows me knows I love Vince Wilfork. Vince. <laughs> Vince. <laughs> you know, I, one of the things that I have the tendency to do is, is choose the biggest, doofiest guy on any team. And he's usually one of my favorite guys. And so I always like him. And I had number three favorite athlete right now, Usain Bolt. I love Usain <laughs> Bolt. Um, you know, just the idea. You jumped on the Bolt wagon. I jumped on the Bolt yeah, wagon. Right. I'm a Bolt man. Um, and so, you know, just running, rounding out my list, I don't know if you had any more. I had Garnett, Michael Phelps, Tom Brady, Paul Pierce. Kobe Bryant has warmed his way into, really? into my heart just a little tiny bit. See, he probably warmed his way into my heart maybe two or three years ago, and then it soured again. I, th I think I it's par par partially for me because the Lakers are no good this year. <laughs> and so as long as the Lakers are no good, I can appreciate Kobe Bryant. When right. they're really good, I don't appreciate him so much. Right. But you think about it. I mean, he's, again, has had a phenomenal career. Right. He is a fabulous athlete. I mean, the question, you know, last year when he, I can't remember with a yeah, point milestone he passed or something oh, yeah. like that. Yeah. They're saying, went, went, is he as good as Michael list. Jordan? Yeah. Hard to argue Hard, that. Yeah. But if you really look at their careers, their accomplishments. They're comparable. <laughs> it's pretty close. Yeah. You know, he... Yeah. He's uh, I think I think you know when, I'd you, pick him. when you look at the yeah, <laughs> wish the Celtics had <laughs> but uh, but uh, when you look at his career I, he's going to go down as one of the top Three, four, five, six players of all time. I mean, I, you know, sounds like a conversation, a topic for another show. Yeah, well, actually, we did that recently, <laughs> but I think it's one of those you can revisit from time to time. Right, Rounding right. out my list is is Gronk. I like Gronk, um, oh, and then and then my my second favorite or third favorite Olympic athlete, Reese Hoffa, which everyone goes, who's that? He's a shot putter, and he's a big doofy guy. Um, he's a shot putter. He got the bronze medal at the London Olympics this year, and I follow him on Twitter. So, so there we go. Well, the obvious follow up question to your favorite athlete right now is. Who don't you like? Who's your least favorite athlete right now? And I have an obvious one, so maybe. Well, I, I, I think my, my first one is probably he's an easy target. But the thing I still can't get by is the decision. <laughs> <laughs> LeBron James, just obviously I don't know him personally, so I can't. <laughs> but just the the ego that goes around televising where you're going to go next. Right. And I, I mean, I really fault him and what his management for that. Sure. And ESPN also for actually <laughs> right. airing it. Right. <laughs> uh, and obviously I don't know enough about whose idea it was or this and that, but it's just... It left a bad taste in your mouth. It left mouth, a bad it? taste yeah. in my mouth and, and I didn't even watch it, you know, so right. I'm not one of those who didn't like it, but then I watched it, you know. But, <laughs> you know, I just... You know, had enough. I, and, and then the recent thing about whining about the officials, it's like... Yeah. It's the oldest thing in the world, Come on. Yeah. you know, whining about the officials. I, I agree. Mm -hmm. For me, LeBron James just leaves a bad taste in your mouth. You know, and, mm -hmm. and, and I, I, he's a very gifted athlete. I don't particularly like the style of play that he has when he gets that head of steam up and just plows into guys right. and then expects a foul. 
when he was the one who initiated the contact. I mean, that's a whole NBA thing I don't like anyway, mm -hmm. you know. But be that as it may, I also happen to put Eli Manning on that list. He just seems like <laughs> a crybaby to me. You know, I, he's had some success, but every time you turn around, he just has this look like, I'm a Manning. I'm supposed to be better than this. And it's just, I just don't like him yeah. for that reason. He also beat the Patriots twice in the Super Bowl, but that has well, nothing to yeah, do with I it, mean, I'm sure. That, I hate him for that. You know? <laughs> it's interesting to say that about the whining because, you know, I, as you do, have many family in the New York area. Right. And they all say the exact same things about Tom Brady. Right. You know, so, <laughs> so there we go. I mean, obviously we're homers here. <laughs> it's all a matter um, of perspective, I and guess. And the thing about me, going back to LeBron, about whining about calls, you know, you look at the replays, like, they're fouls. Yeah. You know, how can you whine about the rules? Right. Uh, you, know, you, you know, and that leads me to another really kind of a group of athletes hmm. that still I just can't get past, and it's the... 2001 Oakland Raiders, Ooh. who still, still whine still. about the tuck rule snowball, when they, snowball when they, game. When they eliminated the tuck rule a few weeks ago, they brought all the Raiders on um, to ESPN to talk about the whole thing again. And it's, like, you know, it's like, get over it. It was a rule. Right. You know, the, you can, we can debate the saneness of the rule, and NFL has done that, you know, right. and have, by eliminating it, but come on. You know, yeah. it, it was a, it's a rule. It was interpreted correctly. Yeah. It's a rule. Get over it. Rule. And even that, you know, you didn't have to allow the receptions after the call. Right. You know, right. you didn't have to. It's not as though the tuck you know, rule was a touchdown. Exactly. You know, exactly. The There's game. still a lot of There's, game to be played. Right. And, you know, just Charles Woodson moved past it. Yeah, yeah, I agree. No, I, I, okay. and I, I can't stand the whiny athlete syndrome from anybody, really. Right. I just had one more one I didn't particularly care for. I just had any Chinese diver in the Olympics. <laughs> I, I, Wo like, Jing Jing? Yeah. <laughs> they're just so arrogant. They, that's the way they come across. Obviously, I don't know any of them, but they're like, oh, we're Chinese divers. We're going to win the gold medal because we're Chinese divers. And in fact, if we don't sweep all the medals, then something is wrong with the judging. Well, and, and, <laughs> I don't know. But the, the fact of the matter is that. They do sweep all the medals, <laughs> okay? And that's part of why I don't like them. <laughs> and, uh, you know, in the Summer Olympics, um, two Summer Olympics ago, when Wo Jing Jing yeah, did yeah. all thing, my son, who was five years old at the time, fell in love with swimming and diving okay. because of that. Okay, so, well, I, mean, I, 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 I understand what you're saying, because <laughs> it's kind of like, okay, the Yankees have to win a World Series again and again, right, you know, right. but... You know, they deliver. They deliver. <laughs> they, do, <laughs> they do deliver. You can't doubt that. Well, we are out of time here in the first half on the big picture. Uh, we've had some interesting discussion about our likes and dislikes, and, uh, and from Chinese divers to Vince Wilfork to, to Kobe Bryant. Uh, we have people that we like and people that we don't like for various reasons. And yes, we are New England sports homers. <laughs> With that, we're going to go to break now. We have a few messages from a couple of our friends. We'd love you to watch them and join us back here for the second half on the big picture. Abundant Life Christian School is a school committed to the nurture of the whole child, academically, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. Our staff have been called by God to enter the teaching profession. As evidence of God's call, they are dedicated to and gifted in the task of helping parents grow kids God's way. Academically, Students are engaged in the combination of the best of both worlds, tradition and innovation. Character values are emphasized throughout days that focus on a broad educational experience and a strong academic foundation. To learn more about Abundant Life Christian School, please go to our website at www.ablifeschool.org. Hello and welcome back to the big picture, the second half. We spent the first half talking about the things we like and dislike about athletes in sports and athletes we don't particularly care for and those who we really enjoy. We're going to get into some little more nitty gritty in a minute here. But first, I just want to, as we start the baseball season, I kind of want to talk a little bit about the Hall of Fame. This is one of those conversations that we have when we're watching sports <laughs> around the TV. You know, if you, who would you put in the Hall of Fame right now? So they have to qualify for the Hall of Fame, which means they need to be in the league 10 years. 
Um, and that's kind of one of the things that can't be in the Hall of Fame if it, you know, Mike Trout can't be in the uh, Hall of Fame or something like that. He's definitely in. He's definitely in. He's only <laughs> no played one. About it. He's only played one season. <laughs> so if you had to pick Major League Baseball players in the league right now who you think are no doubt Hall of Famers, who, who would be on your list? So players in the league currently playing. Currently playing, though one of mine just retired. But <laughs> okay, all right. So because there are some who will be eligible soon that I think will right. They have to be uh, currently in the league. So currently playing. Um, well, currently, uh, he's not playing right now, but currently on a major league roster, Derek Jeter. Derek Jeter. Oh, the, the pain. The Again, pain. we're Boston homers, but you can't deny right. his career. Um, you know, the World Series alone, and he has been the undeniable leader of that team, sure. especially during that time and even beyond. And, uh, you know, this is an interesting question to come up with the Hall of Fame because of the steroid era exactly. and questions and uncertainty about that. And so I'm interpreting this question as players that I would vote for, and I'm still waiting for that ballot, um, <laughs> and also players that I think will get the votes of the writers, sure. and the writers have shown that they're not going to vote for people who have had even a hint. Yeah, definitely not on the first the ballot. Steroids. Definitely yeah. on this first, uh, first ballot. Uh, so, you know, and Derek Jeter, his name hasn't been mentioned at all right. there um, uh, with any of that. So, you know, and uh, this is another interesting one because I question whether I would put him in, but okay. a person who I think will go in All right. is currently playing is another Yankee, Mar Mariana Rivera. Oh, oh, it's painful. It's painful. Hate to say it again, <laughs> you know, because people say he's the best relief pitcher of all time. Well, he may be, but... Uh, you know, almost by definition that he's a relief pitcher, that means he's not as good as starting pitchers, you know. <laughs> yeah. But again, you got you look at the numbers, you look at the career stats he's put up, the consistency with which he's pitched. The only caveat is that on his plaque, I want it said about how he gave up leads to the Red Sox all in the, the time, All the time, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> right. I remember when Manny Ramirez first came to the Red Sox back in 2001 or 2002, whatever year it was, and uh, the first game they played against the Yankees, and uh, they were the Red Sox were down in the bottom of the ninth. Rivera comes in, and Manny Ramirez hits a single up the middle to win the game for the Red Sox. And I remember jumping off the couch and saying, that's why we got that guy. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it kind of worked out that way. He, he had some struggles mm -hmm. against the Red Sox in those real glory years there, and that was great. Um, you know, the other thing with Rivera is it's impressive how he's taken one pitch and turned it into a career. Right. You know? right. <laughs> um, that should but, be on his plaque. Too. That should be on his plaque. The guy only had one pitch. Um, whether or not he's the greatest reliever of all time, I think Raleigh Fingers might have something to say about that, you know, but uh, and, and maybe a few others along the way. But mm -hmm. it, you know, it's hard to hard to argue, especially in the postseason, uh, with the numbers. I have Jeter on my list too, unfortunately. Jeter and Rivera. Okay, we got the distasteful ones out of the way. Uh, any right. others you'd put on that list now? Uh, well, you mentioned recently retired, and uh, I assume you're meaning Chipper Jones. Chipper Jones, I would, yeah. You know, again, looking at his career and the uh, the numbers he put up, the consistency with which he played how his teams were pretty much consistently good yeah. and, um, you know, even his uh, maneuverability in the field. I mean, he mm -hmm. played a little outfield, played third base, shortstop, you know. He, um, yeah, I mean, I think he has the numbers for Cooperstown. I agree. I have Chipper Jones on my list um, just because, again, of, of a lot of those reasons, the consistency, uh, especially as a hitter, but even in the field, there's multiple positions. He played his positions well. Mm -hmm. He had excelled at third base. Uh, and I think he's going to again go down as probably one of the best third basemen of all time. Mm -hmm. You know, certainly in the top 20 third basemen of all time. Mm -hmm. and, and in this era, you know, how many great third basemen are there in this era? It's hard to come up with, with a string of great third right. basemen. Will Milbrooks. Era. We'll, well, we're hoping on that. <laughs> we'll get about to that in a few minutes. Well, I think it's interesting that the names that I thought up uh, were uh, also players that did their entire career with one team. And yeah. I think it's really interesting when I think of Hall of Fame careers, how much identification with a team really helps. I interesting. Think, I, think know, I think it does. I think it does. I think I think the writers like that too, who are the mm -hmm. ones who make that decision. I have a few other names on my list. You can tell me yep. if you agree with any of these. I think Albert Pujols, is probably a Hall of Famer. At the, at this, he's, he just did his tenth year last year, so he's finally eligible for this conversation. Yeah, and he already um, has better numbers than most hitters. In the Hall has, of Fame yeah, exactly. Part, so. His numbers are great, and and, and I think he's <laughs> with he's gold glove. In there, I believe yeah. he had a, has a gold glove. Yes, I think it's two. Two, two gold gloves. Yeah. yeah, so so he's in there. I have Ichiro Suzuki on that. I hadn't list. thought of him. Of but course, he's a Yankee now, but I have Ichiro on that list. Mm -hmm. uh, I have Tomei on that list. Really? And the reason for Tomei is he has career numbers, especially with home runs, 
never tied to the steroid thing at all. Not even a whiff of the steroid thing. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to pick a power hitter from the steroid era that you want to put in the Hall of Fame, it's going to be Tommy. There's not going to be anybody else. Um, so, you it's know, true. You and know, I it, still think he would look great in a Red Sox uniform. <laughs> especially in the mid-90s. He would have looked awesome in the Red Sox uniform in the mid-90s and in the early 2000s. Uh, today, not so much. Yeah, I mean, well, well, I mean, he'd look good. He'd look it. good. He'd yeah. look good. He looks like a classic Red Sox <laughs> slugger. He does. Who is he playing for now? I'm sorry, I don't know. I should Tomei, know. I believe, um, ended up with... Was it Philadelphia last year? And he is with somebody this year. I think he might be back with Cleveland. Was actually. he back with Cleveland? I think he's back I'm, with I'm, Cleveland. As I asked, I was thinking that I heard that he. I think he's back, back with Cleveland. Cleveland with and, Tito. And, and I was I was I, I was I was chastised by someone to put a pitcher on my list, and so I, I went with the the only the best pitcher who's eligible for this conversation is mm -hmm. is Roy Halladay. Uh, mm -hmm. Doc Halliday um, has, has certainly has the Cy Youngs, and, the, and some of the, the win numbers aren't there, but that's because we played for a terrible Blue Jays team for all those years, right. and still put up a lot of wins, but didn't get up to the 19 and 20s in those wins in some of those years, and so as a result, when you look at his career, he doesn't have the huge win totals over time, but I mean, his, his, his ERA is right on track, mm -hmm. his, everything else about him, I mean, he's a big game winner, big game pitcher. What I like about Halliday also is that he's one of those last few pitchers that plans to pitch the entire game when Absolutely. Starts, which yeah. just doesn't happen anymore. And I'm just now coming around to that fact that that's just how the game is. Pitchers, yeah. starting pitchers go five innings. Yep. We saw it, you know, even this season already. Yeah. Starting yeah. pitchers go five, and then it's the bullpen. And then it's the bullpen. Halliday, you expect him to go nine. Yeah. yeah. And he often delivers. And he has, he has led the league in complete games every mm -hmm. almost every season he's played. And, uh, and by, by a lot. You know, he'll, right. he'll have 10, 12 complete games, and the next closest guy will have two. I right. mean, he's just, you know, <laughs> and that's the way he plays the game, and I think it's, it's terrific. Mm -hmm. All right, well, it's time in, the time in our show to go with Kevin's rant. And my rant in this show has to deal with Major League All-Star games. Recently, we had to suffer through three Major League All-Star games pretty much right week to week to week behind each other. The NFL Pro Bowl, we had to suffer through the NBA All-Star Game weekend, and then we had to suffer through the NHL All-Star Game. Let's be real for a moment. NHL All-Star Games are normally the score is somewhere in the neighborhood of 8 to 9 or, or, or 12 to 2 or 12 to 7 or something like that. You know, it's not a real good representation of what the game actually is. No one plays defense. It's a waste of time. You just kind of watch it, the puck go up and down, and it's really not all that fun to watch, in my opinion. Basketball, same thing. Score of the basketball All-Star Game, 150 to 147. Name an NBA game that does that. Even a quadruple overtime game doesn't get up into the 150, 140 range for score. It's, it's, there's no defense played, and it's not a good representation of what the game actually is. Combine that with the NFL or the NBA weekend with the dunk contest being a joke this year, with the skills competition barely being of any kind of interest, the three-point competition, no call for anything good. None of the star players do those things. It's just, they're awful. The only all-star game that's of any worth at all is the baseball all-star game, and it's because the players actually try. So here's my solution. If the star players aren't willing to play in the all-star games, they don't get their salary for the rest of the season. Take their salaries away, they'll play in the all-star game, they'll play defense, they'll play a tough game, and it'll be much more fun for us fans to watch. And that's my rant for this show. <sighs> Can't stand those All Star games. <laughs> I don't watch them. <laughs> well, that would be one solution, <laughs> wouldn't it be? Okay. <laughs> the big picture is done. We have run out of time. I thank you for watching. Thank you for joining us for this discussion. Enjoy sports. Enjoy the Red Sox season. And we will see you in the future. My name is Kevin Vent. I am the host of The Big Picture. Thank you, Eric, for being on the show. Thank you. And have a good day. that at the Burbank YMCA, every day, over 700 people pass through our front doors. Over 200 children learn to swim in our pools. 
Over 300 people improve their health in our fitness center. Over 250 children advance their academic achievement in our preschool and after school programs. And in the summer, the Burbank YMCA provides safe and nurturing places to be a kid where every day over 500 children play, learn, and grow in our five summer camps. At camp, every child is given the opportunity to learn to swim and be safe around the water, to make new friendships that can last a lifetime, to be mentored and cared for by adult role models, to experience new things, and to have a lot of fun. Y is a charity. We take pride in never turning anyone away for the inability to pay. Our door is always open to those in need. How do we do it? With our members, our mission-driven staff, community partners, and you. Join us in making a positive impact in our communities. Together, we can make a difference.